lovers. Pull my mask down for a couple of minutes. This is Bill Marina behind the camera. We're out here on beautiful Cayuga Lake. We're going to talk Secchi discs. Now, this disc is one of the most important things we use on the boat. People from the Chesapeake Bay to Lake Ontario to right here on Cayuga Lake use this disc to measure water clarity. And scientists, volunteers, people just like you can not only measure water clarity, but they can learn a whole lot about the health of the lake. It's quick, it's easy, it's one of the most popular things worldwide that people use to study water bodies. Now what we're going to be looking at is water clarity, but there's a couple of things that affect water clarity out here in Cuba Lake. There is mud and sediment that washes in from our streams. With that mud and sediment comes nutrients, things that help algae and phytoplankton grow. If we get too much phytoplankton, the water gets cloudy, right? We can learn about it with this. Now we're going to do a demonstration. You may have watched a video just now or before this about this, the Chesapeake Bay. All right, in the Chesapeake Bay, the water quality, the water clarity is very low. It's one to two meters. So you might be thinking as we do this, I wonder if the water clarity in Cuga Lake is going to be more clear or less clear than the Chesapeake Bay. You may have also watched a video of me and Astrid when we were out on June 9th and we just did a Secchi disc here in Cuga Lake. We did a Secchi measurement. That was June 9th. Our Secchi measurement back then was about four meters. Today it is September 16th, right? So that's a couple months later. So does time and the season affect the water clarity? Okay, we're going to try this out. I'm looking around. I've got the sun over my shoulder so I'm not looking into the sun. That's helpful. I'm noticing the waves and some other factors out here that might affect my observation. And now I'm going to lower this black and white disc into the water. We're going to measure the yellow and red markers as they go underwater. Here we go. All right. See my first yellow marker? There's one red marker. That's one meter. There's the second red marker, two meters. There's the third red marker, and I can still see that white disc and the black part down there. So I'm going to four meters. We'll see how that is. I can still see that disc. So I'm going to keep going to four and a half meters. It's starting to get pretty dim, but I think I can still see the white part. Marina, can you see it from your angle behind the camera? Oh no, the camera lost it at three meters. Okay, well I can still see a dim disc, but if I lower it to five, it's gone. So if I raise it up a little bit, I start to see it. And as I test this out, I'm going to say it's about four meters and three quarters. 